Hey everyone, there is no question that electric bikes have become massively popular among the RV community, but researching an electric bike can be intimidating and a little bit time consuming, so we did all the work for you. This is not going to be a video about why you need an electric bike or even, for that matter, which brand you should purchase. What I want to do with this video is give you enough information so that you're educated and ultimately you know how to find the best e-bike that fits you and your lifestyle. And because this is an e-bike guide for RVers, we're also going to talk about how to secure them when you're on the road and also how to transport them. There will be a clickable chapter list down in the video description below if you want to skip ahead to a specific chapter. Okay, the broad definition of an electric bike, it's basically the same as a mechanical pedal bike, except it's got a battery, which supplies power to a controller, which is essentially the brain of the entire electrical system, which then distributes electricity from the battery over to the motor. The motor assists the rider as they pedal. Yes, there are hand throttles that you turn and the bike just goes, no pedaling required. But that is not an option on every electric bike. So first, to understand the drive options on an electric bike, it's easiest to look at the class of the bike. There are three classes of e-bikes. Class one, class three, and class two. I know they're in a strange order, but let me explain. Let's start with class one. Class one is a pedal assisted bike. A pedal assisted bike means you have to pedal to activate the motor. At 20 miles an hour, the power is cut from the motor and will not re-engage while you are pedaling until you fall below 20 miles an hour. It's a very strange feeling the first time you ride a pedal assisted bike, but very cool nonetheless. Class three is also a pedal assisted bike, but instead it will go up to 28 miles per hour and you still need to pedal to activate the motor. Then there's class two. Class two is a newer class to electric bikes. The difference with class two is you have a hand throttle control that will propel the bike without pedaling. The hand throttle though is legally limited in the United States to 20 miles per hour. Now, in my opinion, and from all the research that I've done, class two seems to be the go-to. Having that hand throttle is really a fun feature. Now, if you wanna go as fast as you possibly can, you probably wanna look at a class three bike because that will take you up to 28 miles per hour on pedal assist, but remember no hand throttle. Every state has different laws regarding where you can and cannot ride an electric bike. Some states will require you to wear a helmet, while there's also restrictions on where you can ride an electric bike based on the class of the bike. I can't cover all 50 states in this video, but it is worth mentioning so you're aware. I'll put a link to a resource down in the video description below, and finding more resources specific to your state shouldn't be that difficult. So you've decided on which class of bike you wanna get, so let's first take a look at frames. One of the most important decisions when choosing an electric bike is knowing exactly where you want to ride. There are mountain bike style frames, cruisers, all-terrain, commuter, Computers, step throughs, city bikes, trikes, and even folding frames. There's a lot of options, and as you research electric bikes, the product description will tell you what terrain that bike is made for, so there's no reason to spend a lot of time in this video going over all the frames. I do, however, want to mention one very important thing in regards to frames. E-bike manufacturers will list a recommended rider's height range for each model. Knowing the ideal rider's height range for each model is critically important because think about it. The bikes you bought in the past, you probably bought from a store, you were able to to hop on them and test them out. Chances are you're most likely buying an e-bike online, so you're never going to test ride it. So check the recommended height for the models that you're interested in. Now you may have to look at a couple different e-bike manufacturers to see a wide variety of frames. Some manufacturers only make a few frames while others have a larger product line. The manufacturer we partnered with has a huge selection of frames and their website is a great one-stop shop to see the availability. But we're gonna talk about ad motor a little bit later in the video. Tires kind of go hand in hand with the frame of the bike. For example, city or commuter bikes are meant to be ridden on smooth paved surfaces. So they will come with more of a standard bike tire. The fat tire has become a popular option on all terrain bikes because it gives you that freedom to transition different riding surfaces. Even if you ride primarily on smooth surfaces, the fat tire is still a great option. It's a larger tire. It has more stability for the higher speeds that electric bikes are capable of. But honestly, don't spend too much time worrying about frames and tires. It's more important to know exactly where you're going to be riding your bike and make sure the frame fits your height. As you research your options, the manufacturer's product description will tell you which frame and tire style is best for your riding, and you can narrow down your search from there. 
Next, we'll talk about what to look for in a battery. So e-bike battery specs, voltage, amp hours, and watt hours. The higher the number, the more efficient of a battery you will have and the longer it will last. There's no need to dive into the science of why. I think it's more important for this video to explain the industry benchmarks. That way you have an idea of what's good and what's not good. The most common battery sizes are 48 volt and 52 volt. The 36 volt batteries have kind of fallen out of favor since they just can't compete with the 48 and 52 volt batteries that are coming standard on most bikes today. So if you have a choice, go with the 52 volt battery, but if the bike you really want has a 48 volt battery, there's no need to worry, it's still a great sized battery. Amp hours is another rating worth looking at. It's gonna give you a good idea of how long your battery is going to last on one charge. Think of it like a gas tank. The industry standard is set around 10 amp hours. 15 amp hours is really good, and anything above that, like 17.5 amps or 20 amps, is great. Watt hours will essentially tell you how far you're going to be able to travel on one charge. This is determined by multiplying the voltage by the amp hours. The low end these days is around 480 watt hours, while the upper end is around a thousand watt hours. The manufacturer of the battery, or should I say cells, is also important to look at. But a lot of sources I've researched said if you find a battery with a recognizable name like Samsung, Panasonic, or LG, you're getting a quality battery. If the battery is removable, you have more options and places to charge that battery. Also, batteries not being used over the winter should be stored in a climate controlled dry environment. So if your battery is removable, you can leave that in the house while your bike is parked in the garage. It also makes for a safer haul on a bike rack, for example, if you don't have a battery attached to the bike. Locking batteries are also important. On average, they'll cost you about $650. And even if your bike is locked to a rack and the battery is not locked, your battery can still be stolen. So in summary, look for a battery that is both removable and lockable. Let's talk about the e-bike motor. Higher watts mean more power, faster response, and a better ability to climb hills at speed. It's easiest to understand watts if you think of them like horsepower on a car. Now, all the research I have done, I would recommend getting a motor that has at least 500 watts, especially if you weigh in the 250 pound plus range. Torque is also important when researching e-bike motors. Torque on e-bikes is measured in Newton meters, and more torque means more power, and more powered assistance while pedaling. Road bikes should come in between 30 and 40 Newton meters, while heavier bikes like trail bikes and cargo bikes should measure in around 80 Newton meters. So I think that's a good list of features to start with to determine which e-bike may be best for you. Some other noteworthy accessories are lighting if you will be riding while the sun is down, fenders and luggage racks if you're carrying extra equipment, and the braking and gear systems, Tektro and Shimano being two of the most popular manufacturers respectively. These are also good components to compare against different e-bike manufacturers and different price points because they don't always all come on every bike. Okay, hopefully you're learning something about e-bikes. So let's talk about purchasing a bike. If you buy an e-bike online, you're most likely going to have some minor assembly. The most common parts of an e-bike that you'll need to assemble do not require technical background to complete. You won't be installing things like the electrical system, the brake system, or the cassette. Some of the things you will have to assemble is usually just the front wheel, the handlebars, the seat, the fenders, and the luggage rack if it comes with one. If you maintain and repair your RV, you should have no problem finishing the assembly of an e-bike. So we chose to go with the company Ad Motor for our electric bikes, and I'll talk about why in a second. I wanna go over a couple of the features on my bike. This is my M550 P7, and this is Tara's M430, which she got in rose gold to match her car. I'll put links to the individual review videos for these bikes down below in the video description, but today we're gonna to cover the Cliff Notes version. These are both class two bikes, meaning they have pedal assist and the throttle control. Both bikes have front and rear mechanical disc brakes from Tektro. Both are also fat tire bikes, a seven speed Shimano Altus gear system. The front suspension forks are lockable. The cargo rack front and rear fenders are also factory on these bikes. And both frames are built using 6061 aluminum alloy. Okay, now over to the electric components of the bike, and this is where I really want to give kudos to Ad Motor. All of these components on our bikes meet or exceed the specs that we talked about earlier in the video. It's a 48 volt, 17 amp hour, removable and lockable Samsung battery, a 750 watt motor, a display that is easy to read, it even has cruise control. Front headlight and rear tail and brake light, all standard equipment, and that's one reason we chose Ad Motor. 
Second, AdMotor is a full line manufacturer. I had tons of frame and tire choices on one site. Tara chose the M430, which is a cruiser bike because she won't be riding as aggressively as me. This model is a step through, meaning it's easy to get on and off the bike and comes with comfortable cruiser style handlebars. Additionally, AdMotor gives you a large selection of colors. Now that may not be the most important spec to some people, but it is a nice option to have because most manufacturers only give you the option of two or three different colors. I'll put a link to AdMotor's website down below in the video description. They have a sale going on right now. Most of the sale prices are anywhere from $200 to $600 off. I'll also put a discount code down below so you can get an additional 5% off any bike that is currently $14.99 or higher. And that 5% is on top of their current sale prices. The discount code will be valid through September 10th 2022. Shipping is free and the folks at AdMotor have been a pleasure to work with and we could not be happier with our AdMotor electric bikes. So most of you who are watching this video own an RV, so let's quickly talk about the different ways to secure and transport your e-bikes. First, how you secure your e-bike depends on a lot of different factors. Personally, for me, the best option for our lifestyle and where we park our bikes is an Avis chain lock. Chain locks are very versatile, but instead of going over all that information, I'm not an expert on chain locks, so I'm gonna put a link down below in the video description to the video that I watched that educated me a lot on different types of bike locks, and I think that you'll learn a lot from watching that video. So transportation of an e-bike is dependent on the type of RV that you own and also how many e-bikes that you have. If you own a travel trailer, you have rear bumper options, a bike rack above the propane tanks on the front of the RV, truck bed options as well. If you have a fifth wheel, your truck bed options are basically eliminated. Same with a motorhome. So you're probably looking at a rear bumper bike rack. You also have the option to transport your e-bike inside the RV, which can be a little bit tricky, but it is an option that a few RVers are using and that's where the foldable frame bikes come into play. I have not decided on how I'm going to transport my e-bikes yet. It's probably going to be a truck bed option, but that's for another video down the road. There's a lot of options and this is something that you're going to have to research a little bit on your your own, but it is important to understand that e-bikes are heavier than standard bikes. The other thing that's important is if you're using a bumper rack for your e-bikes, you want to make sure that bumper can sustain the weight of that rack and the additional weight of those e-bikes. Next, we're going to take the e-bikes out on the road, but if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more RV related videos, we hope you consider subscribing. And as always, product links and additional information are down below in the video description. Make sure to check that out. All right, let's get out on the road. Together far away, you and me uh, We'll have a celebration to an unknown destination Can't you see? I can see us breaking down the barrier Oh yeah With the speed of light we cross the stratosphere